Agenda today, we have action item review. We have, uh, uh, I guess, Todd, you're going to do an update on the election. Yep. Yep. All right. And then we've got two um, proposals one for the Explorer, and um, either Parda or Dan or myself will present that. And then we have uh, another proposal that I'd like to have Balwa in introduce. We, we don't have to. Uh, um, we don't have to approve it because uh, this is the first time we're all seeing it and there hasn't been a lot of opportunity for people to review it, but certainly we can let Bawa um, do the introduction and then we can pick it up again next week. And then we'll have work group updates unless there's anything else that we should cover. Okay, I think that's it. So. Um, uh, action I'm reading. So updates on the hackathon, uh, Todd, yep. uh, the preparations for the August and then the October. Yep. So a couple things uh, for the August hackathon that'll be uh, the 24th and 25th. That's about two weeks from right now. Uh, in the chat window, I'm pasting a doc where we can start building out some agenda topics. Uh, if work groups are interested in holding a dedicated session during those two days as part of the virtual hack fest, please get in touch with me and let me know what time you're looking to do that just so we can get everything slotted in over the two days, call in details, etc. I think one thing that will be helpful that the group noted from last time was having a more defined set of topics uh, that people want to walk through uh, and be a bit more focused from that front. So I think if we can just take a quick minute now uh, to maybe brainstorm some of the things people would like to accomplish during this time, whether it's from the projects or whether it's from the technical community, uh, that will help us uh, start to build out uh, a better agenda for it. Okay. Um, well, so from a fabric perspective, I think we want want to um, do a repeat of what we tried to do the last time, um, and that is. You know, to encourage people to come and, and, and build an app or build some chain code, and then we can have some of the, uh, the fabric experts um, available to, to help, you know, either with remote pairing or, you know, screen sharing and so forth um, to get people off the ground. So um, I think, um, you know, one of the things that we didn't have the last time was possibly enough of a... Um, uh, socialization of that so so um, but I, I would like it to be focused on building stuff with the fabric I think it's in a position where you know with the developer release that people can actually start writing code you know whether it's chain code or working with the SDK and so forth and I think that's where we'd like to focus great we'll get that that noted and slotted in mm -hmm. Um, others from the community or from Sawtooth or uh, any other work groups? Yeah, on the uh, Sawtooth side, I think we probably have uh, we set up a similar objective to you know, facilitate getting people up and running with Sawtooth and, and maybe making a simple transaction family, kind of like we did on the, the prior virtual hack fest. Um, and then we're also planning on doing some restructuring. I don't recall if we've actually sent anything to the mailing list, but there's been some discussions on Slack uh, where we're going to be doing some uh, repo consolidation and package renaming. So if we don't get to that before the, the HackFest timing, then that might be part of uh, the collaboration that takes place during that. So it sounds like we're in very similar, I, I wonder, you know, um, Todd, I don't know if Brian is on or not, um, but maybe we could somehow rather leverage the LF um, social media outreach to raise awareness. Yep, sure thing. Yep. Uh, hi, this is uh, Vipin. We had uh, mentioned uh, something about actually building a use case, which was the DVP. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the small group that got together for this purpose, most of the people are not available for the uh, 
August Hackfest. Uh, but we will continue to uh, work on it uh, otherwise and then try to spark interest in the community by uh, putting it out there in the demo and other groups so that uh, we can build uh, some kind of a momentum around it because we uh, feel that uh, we need to actually build, uh, uh, you know, use cases that make sense, at least to us, to the financial community. Uh, maybe, maybe there are other use cases out there that people can work on, but we would ideally try to work on it on one of the, uh, one of the, uh, uh, you know, umbra one of the variants under the umbrella, uh, which would be, you know, the first thing would be fabric. Then we would also like to uh, try to do it on once we get it to try to do it on Sawtooth Lake. Uh, but this is the general idea. But obviously, since uh, uh, we won't be available during this particular hackathon, we will. Uh, we we just want to put it out there that we we want to do this. Uh, that's all. And Vipin, it's it's Richard here. That, that, that triggers a couple of thoughts here in my mind. So. Um, I haven't been involved in the DVP discussions here, but if you could loop me in or tell me where to go, I'm happy to add some comments there. It's obviously something that we've been looking at very closely, as, as you'd imagine, and I guess, as, as you know, we do put in both camps um, um, uh, as part of our work, and it'd be, it'd be great if we could inject some of that into this. Um, uh, as an aside, not directly related to DVP, but, but to requirements more generally, just so everyone's aware, one of the, um, one of the working groups um, within the R3 consortium is getting close to finalizing uh, our paper on interoperability. Um, and given that it talks to DBP, but it obviously also, also talks to what we're trying to do here, I'm currently going through the process of figuring out what IP um, loopholes, I, or what IP hoops I have to jump through to see if it's something that we can contribute to this. So uh, um, not directly related to that, but I'll surface it now whilst I've got the microphone. Thanks. Well, the, the question is, you know, DBP could be, uh, well, without, uh, I mean, your definition of interoperability is, uh, you know, not uh, meaning. You know, there's there's uh, sort of uh, let's say debate about what exactly interoperability means. Uh, but in the beginning, it would be just DVP on the on a single uh, single chain. Uh, there is a right. Oh, of, in, in, uh, indeed, I'm actually, sorry. I see. Sorry, sorry, but uh, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. I, I conflated two things there. I was just, I was, I was for efficiency. I was covering two topics whilst I had the microphone. Um, so, so yeah, for anyone who's confused, um, yeah. intro, interoperability was, uh, I was. I was raising that as a separate topic and not saying that was related to DVP. Sorry for the confusion. Okay. So as far yeah. as DVP is concerned, uh, Jeremy has a use case. Jeremy had written uh, quite uh, quite a bit of. Uh, Jeremy and the use case team, I, I believe, have. Uh, quite a bit of uh, work on it, and they already have something on the on the requirements uh, uh, work group already put together this um, this DVP use case to some detail. Of course, uh, you know it may not be complete. Uh, there may uh, you know we may need to do some more work on it. But in the end, uh, uh, the point is that we want to build. Uh, something that is relevant to the business. Uh, I mean, it's it's great to have technical uh, background, like for example, the explorers, the various languages, the, the hardening of the consensus, separation of consensus, and uh, and smart contracts, and so on. But uh, and identity, of course, uh, and uh, but but the you know we might not be able to do it completely because of whatever stumbling box, but then we'll uh, take that to the various other working groups and say, look, you know, we're not able to do this because this particular aspect is overlooked or not uh, not complete, or maybe there's a way to do it and you guys can tell us how to do it, you know, those kind of things. So I think it's, it's more of a um, exercising of all of the parts in order to come up with some uh, use case. That's That's what we're talking about. Anyway, uh, I don't want to hold up the discussion on the uh, Hackfest because this is not directly relevant to this particular Hackfest uh, because none of us can really participate because we are all on holiday uh, during that period. Thank you. 
One additional HackFest note I wanted to add, this is Brian. Um, so we're, uh, as I think Todd mentioned, we're hosting a hackathon at uh, with AB and AMRO on the two days prior um, over the weekend, uh, and it's intended to be um, uh, <clears throat> uh, promoted fairly widely locally, um, uh, and it will be an actual competition um, with teams uh, uh, and uh, and actually some prizes, uh, and it will be focused on on Hyperledger. Um, so uh, what we're hoping is that uh, at that hackathon we can pull people who seem to be even more interested than usual um, and more in depth, uh, the most in depth of the people that we meet there. Hopefully we can pull them over to the Hack Fest uh, the next few days. Um, I, I also would extend this as an invite to anyone attending the Hack Fest to also feel free to either participate in the hackathon or uh, um, uh, simply come in and observe uh, and, and participate that way. Um, I don't know if there's anything else to add on that. No, I don't think so. <clears throat> so the the one thing that was uh, expressed in the chat, Satoshi uh, was asking whether or not there would be um, potentially um, uh, opportunity for people to get together at the LF um, if they were in town to for for, for the hack fest. At the LF. So, so I think uh, Oshima-san's question was about uh, LinuxCon that's happening in Toronto as opposed to uh, Linux office in San Francisco. Oh, oh, I must have misunderstood. Okay. Um, we, we can check with the Linux Foundation events team if there's space at LinuxCon. I think it's a bit uh, late. There likely isn't, but we'll we'll certainly ask. Any other questions, comments on the Hackfest and Hackathon? Okay, I think the next topic was the, um, I lost my position here. Um, uh, the release taxonomy. So Brian? And could somebody paste a link to that um, in, the, in the chat? Yeah, uh, and, and um, uh, again, uh, uh, it's waiting on me. Um, uh, not yet updated that document yet to reflect. Oh, okay. Denver, so um, easy to pass. Move along from that. Um, uh, uh, still, on, still waiting on me. If anyone else would like to volunteer to help with that, um, I, it probably isn't that hard. Um, uh, just a little bit of time reconciling what is the Semver standard with what's been proposed in that doc. Um, but otherwise, it, it is still on my to-do list, just not not with the the, the crisis date and okay. other stuff we've had. So. Okay, that's fine. Any volunteers for that? I, I I could maybe take a little bit of time to noodle on it. All right, I guess it'll be me. All right, so why don't you put add me to the action, and, and uh, Brian and I will try and at least bat it back and forth once before next week. Sounds good. Uh, next up is the election. All right. Um, so for the election, uh, I think we've talked about this the past few weeks, uh, but just to remind everyone, let me paste this into the chat window. One second. So from a timeline standpoint, uh, shortly after this call, we'll open the nomination phase for the steady state TSC. That will be open for about one week. All the information will be included in email. Um, after one week, we will move to the voting phase, uh, which will be open for about one week as well. And then we'll announce the results of the steady state TSC. From there, we'll move into the TSC chair election with a similar time frame and process. Um, the only other thing is, and I'm gonna paste it into the window here as well, we have pulled together uh, a list of everyone that's eligible to nominate themselves and run in this election. We've shared that on the TSC call for the last four weeks, I believe. It's also been sent out to the mm -hmm. uh, TSC technical discuss list as well as posted on Slack. Please be sure to go in and review. Uh, if you do not show up in this list, but should be, please send me a note immediately so we can get you added uh, and make sure that um, you should be on that list. 
there's a couple emails that popped up at the end that we didn't have names for. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that uh, anyone that should be be in this nomination election process are included. Uh, so for those, reach out to me as well. Um, otherwise, uh, about 30 minutes after the TSC call ends, we will use this as the official list to kick off the nomination phase. So just checking with the TSC, are there any objections to moving forward with this as the list and getting the nomination started shortly after this call? Fine by me. All right. So, okay, me. Um, I think a couple of those are Intel. I don't know if Dan or Mick um, can figure out who that who who, who it, that is. Least, I, I suspect some of those highlighted in blue at the bottom are just duplicates of someone's actual <clears throat> corporate email, um, and Could likely be, yeah. be included. Um, but please do double check. Um, otherwise, it doesn't sound like there are any objections to moving forward with this as the official list. Uh, so we will get this uh, kicked off shortly after the TSC call. And, and Todd, if you're on the list, can you nominate other people from the list for, uh, for the election? Typically, we do uh, self-nomination. Um, I don't think that that's explicitly stated in the charter, but I will go have a a quick look now um, but other projects it's always um, typically self-nomination if this group wants to consider something else um, the TSC can decide that um, I, I would I personally would probably not nominate someone before talking with them but uh, I do find it's a good um, way to indicate to give people some confidence that that you know they should consider it um, uh, there are certainly people out there in the community that aren't on the TSC yet that I uh, will, will be approaching um, to see if they are open to it. Um, and uh, I just would encourage others to, to, to put their name in um, if they're on, even if they're on the fence, uh, just because it's um, you know a core part of how how this process works and, and how this community works, and it's a really valuable thing to do. So. Great. So no need to change it. Just uh, um, yeah, I, I hope that folks feel encouraged to, to to go for it. Excellent. We'll get this uh, kicked off shortly after this call wraps up. All right. I think next up is the Explorer proposal. Um, Parta, Dan, or Chris, I'm not sure if one of you wants to take over the presenter role and share anything, or if you'll just be speaking to this. I mean, I don't think there's any presentation at least, um, but the proposal is available. Um, Dan and Chris, if you want, I can um, just talk for a few minutes to the proposal. Yeah, please do, thanks. Yes, okay. thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, the proposal is uh, it's written and co-sponsored by you know Dan, Chris, and myself. Uh, this was uh, initially discussed I think a couple of weeks back, and um, uh, and we had a person from DTCC give a presentation about what DTCC developed. Uh, the idea is uh, I think the quite simple and obvious. Uh, we need some kind of explorer to uh, get insight into what the what activity is going on in the network. Uh, what transactions are taking place uh, and, and the data available as well as the chain codes and transaction families that are deployed to the network uh, and the network status itself. And we could think of more uh, more functionality, but this is the initial functionality that we have included in the in the abstract. Okay. And the, this, is more, this will be a web application. Initially, we're thinking of uh, developing on, uh, as a Node.js application and that will be useful for everybody. Okay. And IBM and Intel and DTCC, all three independently developed explorers. Um, and the idea is to basically unify them and um, unify all the efforts and, and work towards one single explorer that can work uh, with any backend blockchain software, whether it's Fabric or Intel sort of like. So as part of this uh, project, 
we are uh, proposing to create a new basically blockchain explorer uh, project and uh, contribute all the source code that's available uh, and start the development basically uh, by unifying it and making a professional uh, look and feel of the application. Okay. Uh, DTCC, IBM and Intel, all three companies are committing full-time resources to, to, the, to ensure the success of this project and we also obviously welcome uh, participation and contribution from the rest of the community. Okay. Yesterday I sent out the proposal in the email as well as Dan posted the proposal to the wiki. So I hope uh, community had uh, time to look at the, you know, and review the proposal. Okay, um, Dan and Christy, do you guys want to add anything to it? Uh, no, that was well done. Thanks, um, Dan. Uh, no, nothing further. Okay. Um, I mean, certainly from my perspective, I think this is um, a really uh, important and, and good opportunity for us to start, you know, working on something that isn't just sawtooth or just fabric, but that is valuable to both. Um, and uh, I think uh, you know it's sort of the start of you know how we start you know, bringing more collaboration, which I think is a very positive, uh, positive step. Um, you know, we have a little bit of, you know, T-crossing and I-dotting over in, on the IBM side to get the code, um, you know, uh, ready to come across, but uh, we're, we're pretty close. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with all those points. I think it's going to be uh, pretty straightforward for the the very common set of APIs for querying things like blocks and transactions. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but the the interesting parts of this project are going to be when we start exploring what do we do uh, at the point that you've got uh, more unique capabilities in in one platform or the other. Yeah. So I think that'll be a, a nice place for for seeing. Um, how we address that and how, and how that can be put into a, a unified explorer. Anybody have any questions for either part of Dan or myself? This is Mike. I do have one question. Sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Um, is is your intention uh, is the focus going to be is your intention to focus on the the kind of interface um, or uh, it by and by that I mean like user interface um, or is there a, an intention to use this as a kind of an excuse to start standardizing um, APIs external APIs that we could use? I think it's a little bit of both, Mick. Um, at least my personal perspective on this would be that you know we focus on enabling you know a single tool that can introspect on you know the respective blockchains inside the STL and or fabric and potentially other things um, through a pluggable way but that we can also look at that and explore okay so what would it you know what would it take for us to start you know standardizing what the API should be or could be um, and and thinking about Im implementing that in, in in sawtooth or fabric and or you know um, whatever um, I don't think it's a requirement but I do think it's a it, as you point out it's sort of a, an opportunity and <laughs> a bit of an excuse to go off and start right. thinking about that. I, I mean I can imagine two different approaches to it one is sort of a back-end plug-in thing which allows right. each one to, to go off on its own and the other would be to to really encourage um, commonality in those and and trying to push towards at least thinking at least using this as a way to uh, explore opportunities to unify those interface systems like a really good thing and and it will be a useful tool. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I think that I think what is likely to be the case is that as we start down the path of providing sort of a pluggable backend to get the information that uh, there's even differences on the front end potentially and and so then I think that's an opportunity for us to sort of step back and think about where this is where this is heading yeah I have a question and this is Vipin uh, I mean just to contribute to this particular discussion um, is this the first 
tool that is sort of uh, integrating an approach to uh, looking at the multiple variants uh, that we have currently two of course but is this the first tool that is in that vein mm -hmm. uh, so I would uh, well the chain tool is I, and I don't know Mick, how much further you've, you've gotten with Greg and thinking about adapting chain tool to the sawtooth um, uh, uh, transaction families but um, uh, I think you know when when we were talking with Greg about um, the fabric chain tool. I think the in, the 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 stated intention would be that there's potential that it could be more generally useful. Um, although that yeah. wasn't its initial design point. Sure, but uh, to bring it back to what uh, uh, so again, bring it back to what uh, Mick was saying. Uh, basically, this gives us an opportunity to standardize at least the read-only interface and the beginnings of uh, what Richard was talking about before, which is the interoperability situation. Uh, because, uh, you know, like in, in, in several instances, we, we have had uh, any kind of relay tool, uh, like a BTC relay from Bitcoin to Ethereum, or other other uh, kinds of interoperability. Ah. The reading is the first part, and then uh, once the once the read is accomplished from one or the other, then we would need to write into the uh, into the uh, you know suppose you are in fabric and you read from sort of lake, then you could actually do something to write to transform that read into a write into the uh, into the sawtooth lake, read from fabric right to sawtooth lake. So I think that um, would be a function of more of an SDK than just a, a blockchain explorer. That's really but much we, more we, of a way of visualizing what's going on inside, as opposed to something that's actually interacting. Yeah, but uh, it's all, it all starts with the read, which is the uh, which is the explorer. <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting the explorer is going to write, but the beginnings of an interoperability tool would start with a read. Uh, anyway, uh, I think it's a it's a good, great eff effort if uh, you know if it uh, lays over both both systems and it can also uh, bring together a synthesis of uh, you know in, in terms of the uh, uh, interface as Mick was mentioning, if it makes it uh, more you know, common somehow the interface in terms of the read, listening to blocks, listening to transactions, get blocks, you know, these these kind of things. Anyway. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Any other Just, just a comment from me. I'm not not directly related to the thing. So, um, I'm I don't have anything to contribute to the, the blockchain explorer, but I think it's a really useful piece of work. And thinking about both sort of and fabric at the same time is probably the right way to go. Um, just uh, I guess as, as as an anecdote, we're we're doing a lot of thinking about um, the, the the user interface requirements on on the on the quarter side. And, and exactly the same um, discussions are coming up. Essentially, you end up getting down to effectively you know, traditional requirements gathering, user stories, what are the different constituencies. And, and for me, you know, Blockchain Explorer might be the gateway to many other scenarios. But the, you know, the story of show me what's happening in my node or show me what's happening in the network, allow me to, to reason about what's happening. Is, you know, is, is, you know, it, 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 it's not business related, it's not business orientated, it's not, there's, there's no business and quotes value there, but it's absolutely critical one to to developing the platform, allowing developers to use it and, um, and giving people confidence it does what you think. So it, it, it's clearly necessary. Any other thoughts? All right, if none, Todd, can we put it to the question? Yep. Um, so we'll do a quick vote. Uh, just 
walking through the list here. Uh, so first, Stan from CME Group. So, uh, voting for the unified uh, API or just to initiate the project? Uh, just to start the project. And then definitely yes. All right. Uh, Stefan? Yes. Parda? Yes. Hart? Yes. Oshima-san? Yes. Chris? Yes. Mick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Richard? Yes. Yeah. Ajit? Yes, definitely. All right. So that passes unanimously. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. I'll uh, work with Rai to, to set the repo up and then part, I guess, you probably have the first um, code drop and the, our, the IBM one and I, I guess, uh, Dan, you'll work on getting the Intel ones. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get, uh, Peter incorporated in that process. Uh, it's listed now as a maintainer in that doc and he's got access to all okay. the code that we need. Okay. Super. Um, I have to switch headsets because my headset is dying. Okay, can we hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, okay, next up is uh, Balwa, who's got uh, a proposal for a Python SDK for the fabric. Okay, this is Balwa. I'm glad you're here. And, uh, can you see my screen, everyone? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, great. Uh, the proposal is about uh, Python SDK for the hybrid fabric. So why I want to have the proposal? Uh, currently, we, 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 if we want to interact uh, with the hybrid fabric, there are several methods, uh, including using the CLI tools, the, the commands, and the RESTful API. But uh, both, neither way is, is flexible for uh, pro programming. So, and uh, on, on the other hand, uh, we know Python is a very popular language. It's, uh, it's ranking top five uh, within the top five in both GitHub and uh, table index. And uh, currently we have the uh, SDK written with Node.js. And it's also will be cool if we can have a Python one. Okay. And uh, th this is uh, what it may look like. Um, we use uh, several simple um, code, then we can uh, to do some operations like to connect uh, with the uh, hyperledger fabric and uh, we can get the information uh, for our, our block and uh, we can list the existing chain and we can also do the operations with the chain code like uh, typically the deployment and uh, the invoke and also the query. So actually the project is um, started in uh, several months ago. It's uh, April uh, this year. And uh, it has been uh, verified and used in several real web services. So uh, the, main, the main functionality uh, is uh, basically, uh, basically we have finished that. But uh, it, there are also several to-do tasks, uh, including authentication and also the registration. If uh, this proposal is uh, accepted, uh, we will be glad to follow the existing SDK style and uh, uh, also maybe we can also let it to support the uh, Google RPC framework. 
Okay, uh, welcome for answering comments. So the the <clears throat> so my understanding then is that this is working against the REST API presently. Is that correct? Yeah, currently it's only for REST API. Okay, all right. Um, because that is actually um, technically it's deprecated. <laughs> Um, there's there's discussion about um, uh, essentially removing the REST API capability from the peer, um, but relocating it into a, a, a node uh, interface that then uses gRPC to interact directly um, with the the peer node. Um, and uh, but of course that hasn't that hasn't begun, but um, that's the the stated intent. Um, so, <clears throat> and then the other the other question yeah, yeah. I had is actually one that was raised by Keith. I don't know if he's on the call. I think he's in a uh, in a workshop today. But um, uh, which was that? Uh, I think he was hoping that potentially the Python SDK could basically mirror what the Node SDK is doing. Obviously, with Python idioms and so forth. But um, um, I think, it, it, for, at least from my perspective anyway, I think it would be useful if we could at least align them. Um, yeah, so any thoughts on, that, on, I... on that? Is, is, that, is that your intention, is, is my question? Uh, Yes, uh, I, I, I guess your uh, concern is, is to support uh, the gRPC, right? Yes. That out, right? Yeah. Well, so number one, support for gRPC, and number two, because that's where we're sort of focusing our attention going forward. And then the second point is um, in having a sort of consistency between the, the Node SDK and the Python SDK, at least as sort of an exit criteria from incubation. Yeah, yeah, we can follow the style, and we can we can support the RPC. I ha actually, I have put it on the to do list. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other comments, thoughts, questions for Bawa? Okay. I think, and, and again, there's a few people missing from um, the Fabric project, like Greg and and um, and she and others. But I think um, what we should do is the, the proposal is out there. Uh, I'll send a note to the list to remind people to um, please review it and add any comments and so forth. And um, uh, and we'll uh, and we'll take it up again next week. Okay. Thanks, Baha. Oh, sure. Thanks. Okay. Uh, what's up next? I think it was action item. Uh, work group re reviews, rather. Uh, Oleg, are you on? Um, yes, I'm here. Good morning, everyone. Um, um, so, uh, requirements work group. Um, we continue working on use cases. I'm working on a global KYC database. Um, there's work going on for, um, we uh, came back to the e-voting use case as well. It was a good presentation of uh, art auction demo um, that um, turned into a good use case document as well. Mm -hmm. um, we finished the certification use case um, and um, overall I think we're closing in on most of the, uh, um, I mean on the canonical use cases and uh, the last uh, call I asked the group to start dividing responsibilities and uh, actually start um, finishing the uh, the main requirements document because mm -hmm. the, the corpus of the use cases is pretty much closing in so uh, we should uh, so what's the what's the timing look like for that then what what are you thinking um, I can't gauge yet uh, but I, I can assume uh, a few weeks okay especially with uh, people being on vacation and being the summer yeah well right okay thanks mm -hmm. thank you any questions for all like Okay. I just, Ram, um, just one, oh, one last, um, one last note. Um, uh, within the requirements for a group, we also discuss um, 
building uh, prototypes or uh, POCs demo applications. So I'd like to um, call uh, to make a call to the wider audience to propose um, use cases and use cases that can be easily turned into demos. The ones that we can build and uh, demonstrate that a certain use case works well on uh, on the blockchain, especially in the in the uh, financial industry, since we're preparing for Cybers conference, and we need to bring something there. Thank you. Um, I think actually when we had the at the, at the face to face, we had a, a meeting to talk about. Um, there was I think a general session to talk about the Cybos uh, demos. And I think, and, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the conclusion that we came away with was that it's probably, at least for the demo that we highlight in the booth, uh, obviously everybody who's got a booth there is free to do what they, uh, you know, they're, they're free to have their own demos and so forth. But um, I think for the, uh, for the LF Hyperledger booth, um, the thinking was that we would have um, uh, more of a video of a demo rather than a demo itself and highlight um, you know some of the capabilities but without having to um, actually sort of subject the um, build an app the demo That's staff right. to have to navigate through a complex blockchain scenario and so forth yeah a, a combination of like a, a short video rotating on the monitors to kind of grab people passing by um, uh, and uh, one or more uh, basically animated slide decks or, or other animations that um, could be talked through with uh, somebody more interested in a particular use case um, uh, it, it just felt it seemed like it would be more robust more I want to say robust but I hate that word um, uh, re reliable uh, than you know and, and <laughs> Demonstrating blockchain visually to um, banking executives walking by might be a challenge um, in a yeah. more compelling way. And so, so just something Look, that was internet. here and there, so, <laughs> was was the biggest number one goal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up is Ram. Uh, hi, folks. Yes. Um, so uh, we are uh, starting. Um, a separate architecture doc to start uh, uh, documenting our work. Uh, we're meeting at uh, 11 uh, a.m. PDT uh, today uh, for a working session on that. Uh, since we meet uh, biweekly on a regular meeting, there's no other major update uh, this time around. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Dave? Hi, yes. Um, white paper working group here. I'm just posting the link to our wiki. So we met yesterday, um, and if you recall, you know, last last week um, I, I updated the the TSC that we have made the draft 2.0 version available. Uh, the link is there. And so yesterday, you know, we typically um, start off our meetings by reviewing feedback. And the one thing we noticed was that we hadn't received any feedback. So we were contemplating was that because everyone is so happy and satisfied that it's a perfect white paper and <laughs> there's no feedback for improvement or maybe they just didn't get a chance to take a look at it. Um, so you know we, we do want, we did spend a little bit of time, time talking about um, how do we get more people to take a look at it. Um, and, and one of the things that you know we, we did we did note that, of course, Todd's minutes um, include the link in there, and in the top-level README for Hyperledger project, it's referenced there as well. Um, but, uh, but you know, obviously, um, not everyone, especially TSC members, have have commented on it, and so we're, you know, we're looking for some feedback on what would be the best mechanism to make sure that people are reading through it and um, you know giving us some sort of feedback around that and one of the <clears> ideas that was was floated was that you know if we do in fact um, want to, to show this to the board and you know earlier on I think one of the one of the objectives that we had identified was that we did want to uh, present this to the board and members and make sure that they have seen it and are in agreement with what's outlined there. Um, and 
but before we did that, we wanted to make sure that everyone in the TSC has had a chance to read through it and, you know, are comfortable with how we've kind of, kind of outlined that. So uh, that's just, you know, I wanted, wanted to bring this up and, and, you know, try to get some ideas and some feedback on how, how best we should go about doing this. And also even possibly, you know, can the Linux Foundation help with some marketing or, you know, once again, once we think that it's ready for, for broader um, review, uh, that, you know, how, how best we can make sure that it's getting uh, some visibility and some feedback so that we can adjust it to meet what uh, the community is comfortable with. So, um, so I, I want to kind of leave that out there for, for people to kind of think about. Um, I think, uh, you know, also, you know, I, I, I will follow up with emails to um, Chris, you, and, and, and Todd as well um, on this just so that, you know, maybe we could even, uh, if, if we do get some ideas, we can talk about them in a, in a broader audience, um, mm -hmm. you know, our present uh, suggestions and, and so see if people are comfortable with that. So, so uh, my, first of all, my apologies because I haven't actually read the minutes from last week because I was out on vacation and, frankly, <laughs> not yeah, enough. August, like, August is a tough time of year for all, for getting a lot of yeah. feedback and well, my son was married, so I was like, no, 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 I'm just off. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, I, I think maybe the thing we should do is um, schedule a, a walkthrough. Frankly. Um, that's oftentimes the best way to either focus people's attention to get their comments in um, and um, and then we can just sort of go through um, you know sort of section by section and address the comments and that also tends to sort of um, elicit new comments from the slackers <laughs> among us mm -hmm. um, uh, but I, I I don't know uh, what would people uh, is, is one week enough, or do they think they probably want two weeks to? Um, and, and actually, two weeks would uh, coincide mm -hmm. with our hack fest, and maybe the thing to do would be to schedule some time then, a block of time to to go through it and get to the point where at least the TS, pardon me, the TSC members are are comfortable. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Um, so uh, I can. Uh, my only one hearing a hum, or is it my headset? That is me. Sorry. Yeah. No. No. I was saying. I think that that sounds like a, a terrific idea. Um, we could schedule uh, a walkthrough uh, at some period during the the Hackfest time, and. Um, you know, just maybe send out reminders to, to people, maybe try to get people to commit to um, uh, accepting an invitation to participate, um, or, or at least, you know, providing some feedback if they can't, if they're going to be, you know, busy on other activities during during that time frame, uh, mm -hmm. so that we can discuss among at least the working group members um, uh, their feedback. So, yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, super. So let's let's do that, Todd. Um, let's can we could have, can we put out a, a doodle poll for what would be a good two-hour block to focus on the white paper during the Hackfest? Yep, we'll do. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, All right, terrific. All right, good. Yeah, and then just the other couple of little minor updates there. But you know, we so we've. We went through um, pretty much resolved the comments uh, of our of our own. Um, the only things that we have kind of pending right now is expanding the glossary. So you know we're kind of scanning through the entire document, picking out terms that are you know that we feel would be useful if if we could throw them in the glossary. Um, you know, difference between blockchain and distributed ledger, for example, is one that comes up quite quite a bit. And there are, there is an important distinction as uh, uh, as uh, Mick and Hart were, were pointing out during the call yesterday, so so a couple of minor things like that. But other than that, we feel that we've incorporated the feedback that we have received today, and um, and yeah, and just basically, you know, appreciate getting some more uh, reviewing and uh, and 
and I'm sure there's a few things that were there that could be added to make it a, a better a better paper. <laughs> the the other thing is, you know, we we're we are looking to create a LaTeX version of the document, um, something that we could uh, in GitHub in the Hyperledger space. Uh, that way, it would be easier to, to you know, to monitor um, what sort of edits and updates have been done. So, uh, but we envision they're keeping both of them somewhat in in tech. So we'll keep the Google Docs version, and then we'll also have a LaTeX version um, of it. And uh, so that, that's something that we're planning on on adding. And I think that's it for the white paper. All right. All right, so then uh, just uh, a reminder or a, <laughs> a, a plea to everybody to please review the white paper, um, uh, certainly the TSC members, because we're going to ask you to, um, to approve this, and uh, then we'll be sending it up to the governance board. Um, and so it's going to have your name on it, people. Um, and uh, so I would and strongly encourage you, if you haven't been directly involved in, uh, in the, the, the development of the white paper, to please um, do a, a thorough review to make sure that it rep reflects your, um, your perspectives. And then um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Todd, I guess we'll have a, a doodle poll and we'll find a couple hour block to actually sit down and, and we'll just sort of go through section by section address any comments and um, um, and and see if we can expedite getting it past the TSC um, thanks Dave Let's thanks see. where did my window go uh -oh. there it is uh, next up is Christopher Allen I didn't think I saw him on. Okay, so I think he's off. Um, and then lastly, it's me. Uh, continuous integration work group update. Um, and so the Jira trans, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Garrett transition I think is pretty much done. Uh, I think uh, there's still uh, Greg's fabric chain tool um, to, be, to be migrated. Um, uh, but he's on holiday, so um, I'm sure he'll 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 uh, start working on that once he gets back. I know he and I had a chat about that, but I think that for the most part, uh, Garrett is up and running and operational. Um, certainly for the fabric, Dan. I don't know from your perspective whether everything is is, is up and running, but um, uh, I. I Certainly, from a fabric perspective, I think we're good. From uh, from the perspective of Jenkins stuff, or the the Garrett um, use of Garrett for the for the for the uh, SCM, and then and obviously Jenkins as well. But yeah, yeah. So we we haven't made any uh, Garrett changes as of yet. Um, uh, we'll be looking into that. One of the things I alluded to a little bit earlier is... Excuse me? I think somebody's not on mute. Okay. Um, one of the things I alluded to earlier is we're looking at doing some repo consolidation, which will make any sort of uh, CI work a little bit more manageable. Right now we've got um, uh, interdependencies between the repos, which occasionally uh, come up on commits where we need simultaneous commits between the, the repos and um, the guys who have done the, the uh, Jenkins magic here uh, would have to do a little bit less magic uh, to support that more going forward. So uh, we're going to get through that and then uh, see where that leaves us. Okay. And then, um, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Um, and the other aspect of um, the tooling transition is JIRA, and um, we've been discussing this week uh, from a Fabric perspective of just sort of doing a cold restart over in JIRA. Um, and, you know, for people who have issues out on the Hyperledger Fabric um, repository, that if they still care about them, that they should just copy them over manually into JIRA. Um, and close the issue in GitHub, 
and then after a week or two, we'll we'll go through and the maintainers will triage what's left and either close them or or copy them over if they have if they're still relevant. Um, uh, and so I think that's um, well. I, I haven't had any negative feedback yet on Jira, but it, it's starting to get use, and and so I think it's uh, we're in good shape there. The one remaining piece of the puzzle, I think, is the wiki. Um, and there's a couple of different thoughts out there for the wiki, um, and uh, one of them was, uh, and and again, I really appreciate the sort of the cross team discussion with um, Sean weighing in uh, from his perspective on how to deal with the documentation and the wikis. Um, uh, so we have a couple of different suggestions. One is to use something like MediaWiki or Confluence and. Um, and and, uh, and and another one would be to um, uh, to to just leverage Markdown and and publish uh, using the read the read the docs uh, as we are with our with, with both of our um, uh, documentation. <clears throat> that would give us a little bit tighter control over things, um, and so we could certainly do that. Um, there's an ongoing discussion in uh, the mailing list about. Uh, about that, and I would encourage that it continue. Um, but we're working with Rye and the Linux Foundation team to 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 figure out what the right and and best approach for dealing with that is. One of the situations we have to deal with is where are we going to host the documentation if we do this, um, uh, or you know, getting a media wiki or what have you stood up. Um, so we're working through the wiki issues, and hopefully we'll get that resolved within the next week or so. Um, and uh, so that's what I have from the CI perspective. Any questions? Okay. Um, so I guess we're at end of job, and people can have a half an hour back. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day and weekend. Thanks, everyone. Bye.